We're doing the, uh, on Wednesday, we're doing the test on um, lipids using a Sudan 3. There's also one called Sudan 4, but that uses alcohol, and I can do it with 3, but I can do it with 4, so I'll use Sudan 3. And um, I got Ugo, one friend of his house, dressing uh, uh, Oh, ketchup. Should be fat in both of those. What is so, it testing for? We're testing for, for fats. For fats? Okay. Oh, lipids. So bring it back. Bring the things you know are fast and things you suspect. Um, All well, the well, let's be on angel for Huh? Well, let's be on angel. Yeah, yeah, I already started doing it because Ugo's the first person. Sure. If you look at the book on page 40 on it, on the lab, it shows some examples of what you can bring. I, I don't know why I was on the egg white, egg yolk on there again. But, and when y'all make y'all's pictures, I'll pick me some things out and bring that one steal your thunder, so to speak. But I, don't buy a gallon of milk, just give you a little drop of it. Try to figure out some way to make it as like possible for y'all. And um, I tell you, Angel, I'll, I'll be applying the points last time to when I, I already got two of these results in from um, by your bed, and I'll be putting them on there. Emily. Could you get my, no, not, not, not the other Emily, no, you, you're not here yet, okay. I emailed her or something, I don't think you got it now. All right, well, um, let's go ahead and move into this and see about proteins. Uh, of all the things we're going to discuss, well, I, I guess proteins might be the most complex. Nucleic acid is the close second. Carbohydrates are fairly simple. Uh, lipids are a little more complex. Carbo uh, proteins are, they're a booger. There are a lot of stuff there. And the, um, the nucleic acids. I would, it'd be a toss up between who's the, who's the most difficult to understand. But proteins, are, um, they're long chains of, of things put together. The things are called amino acids. And because you have things put together, that's a polymer. Or carbohydrates, there's a polymer. And fats are polymers. So if you put things together, like on a necklace, they're called polymers. And the monomer, the monomer is each of those single amino acids. Now there are four levels of structure for a protein: primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Are how they go with it. So you're about to see pictures of all of them. It's the order of the acids that determine the proteins. It's like you're writing words, you know, if you try to email me something and, and you swap the E and the F, I'm not getting it because you changed my name. And these things here, if you swap the acids, you got a whole new protein. So it's just like, it's like writing. You know? They're very, very particular, the order of the acids. There's your first picture. That, that's just a plain, there's like a necklace. That's a, that's a primary structure. And these things you see right here are the individual amino acids. And they cook them together with hydrogen bonds. Actually, they're called peptide bonds, really. Because when you did the test for um, proteins and you used uh, biuret, it was looking for these bonds. If it found the bonds, then it found the protein. If it didn't find the bonds, of course, then either we couldn't tell because it's so dark to start with, or it didn't change colors. And so the bonds on this is what you're looking for. That's what the, um, the biuret finds. On the woman doing Wednesday, well, I'll tell you about that later on, how, the, how, how that color. It's a pretty red, you're going to see Wednesday, but you don't see, you don't, you don't see shades of it. Uh, I, mean, I guess the prettiest test of all is Benedict's. And then behind that, maybe the shades of our color for the body red. And we did the iodine test we do later on. That's just black versus nothing. So proteins, the primary structure, that's, that's just how we start. And when the ribosome makes them, they're like that. And they start curling up and curling up and curling up and curling up. But that's your simplest structure, a single line. Okay. Um, the secondary level 
you start seeing the things that wrap back over itself. And the acids, they hook across the way to each other. And I'll show you a picture in a minute. And it produces bends. You no longer have a straight, like, necklace. Like, if you took your necklace and tie a knot in it, with a knot, that would be the secondary we're talking about. And the picture is something like this. They start hooking together. They start hooking together. It's almost like, kind of like DNA, right? The way it curls. But obviously, you can see that they're not straight anymore like it was here. They're now wrapping. And to maintain the wrap, they will hook to each other with hydrogen bonds, and that will keep them in that shape. Not the peptide this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. The, the, the peptide bonds keep them together. The hydrogen bonds keep the shape in a curl. Mm -hmm. And even then, the, the body red still found those bonds. It ain't find the hydrogen bond, just find the bonds between the acids. You said the hydrogen is what makes it into a The hydrogen is what connects across the way and keeps that curl. If you were to cut all these bonds, then it would turn back to that. But as it wraps on itself, to keep it wrapped, they bond across, and the bonds work this way, across from each other. They're invisible here. You get me? About, about I have your list, and don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Read it later. Read it later. What is that? I did you a favor. All right. That's not really clear. Um, you cannot see the hydrogen bonds. Well, I mean, you got to go back to the word on that L-E-U, what is that? L-E-U. Oh, right. like one of oh, 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 the words inside here? Yeah. That's the kind of... That's glossary. Don't worry. That's the name of the acids. Okay. Those are the names of the acids, and I don't worry about that. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I can't see them either. I'm going to at it. But there are 20 different acids. We well, have more letters than that in the alphabet. We can make a thousand of words with our letters and twenty of these. So we ain't got no words thousand letters long. Either. They, they do. They can make a, a lot of protein. All right. And then the the next best level, the next more complicated, is tertiary. That would be your enzymes. Like they have those special shapes that substrates fit into. And you're about to see something that's terribly complex. It's, uh, you get that first wrap, and then they start wrapping it over themselves, over themselves again. It's, it's a convoluted mess. But you'll find that the three-dimensional aspect of the tertiary structure, that gives you the enzyme active site where the, where the substrate can plug into. Remember like locking a key, only, only locks and unlocks certain key on a certain lock. Well, the shape of this enzyme, that's the lock. And then what plugs into it, if it'll fit, it's a substrate that the enzyme works on. Well, the three-dimensional shape is what gives you the active site that the substrate has got to fit. If it don't fit, the enzyme won't do anything to it. Like, like maltase is the enzyme for breaking down maltose. Well, sucrose won't do nothing when it gets to maltase because the key won't fit. Malt, the sucrose sugar will not fit into the maltase enzyme. But the sucrose sugar will fit into the sucrose enzyme like a locking, like a lock receiving a key. And that's what you think is. And you have you have thousands of enzymes designed to break down, you know, we, we mentioned making ATP, right? But there's an enzyme that does that, it's called ATP synthase. You don't just make that, an enzyme makes that for you. And the enzyme that makes it for you is found in your mitochondria. And when you breathe in the oxygen, you breathe and you eat the food, the mitochondria makes those two react. And what actually does, the, the, the oxygen breaks up the glucose and the bonds, when the bonds break, that's the energy. 
the bond, they held the thing together as energy. As the bond, as the bonds break, outflows the energy. Some escapes. You're warm right now because you ain't catching it. It's getting away. But a lot of energy is caught in ATP, and ATP is your battery, thousands of them that saves it. And to make to make ATP, really the enzyme called ATP synthase. And that's not making ATP is not as simple as me saying. It's a complex and when I teach biology to folks who, oh, that's y'all, you're going to see later on in this very class the, the difficulty of glycolysis and how photosynthesis works. And I got to admit, I know more now about those processes than I was in Wayne College. I, I know my college professor was not that good. But I know things now that I heard him say, but he never showed me. And now I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay. I understand it now. And I already taught. If you, want, if you want to learn something, pretend you're going to teach it. And you will learn that better. And so since I've gone back over psychosis and aerobic respiration, it, it makes so much sense to me. And I hope I can make the same amount of sense to y'all because I would teach you like I should have been taught when I was in school. All right? Here's what it looked like. Wrap back on the step. See inside there? There's your twist. See that thing right there? Well, he's inside there, but now it's wrapping back on his like a big old earthworm. Hey, Amy. Hey, sorry. Here you go. Oh, Lord. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So you can see inside the spiral nature of the second degree protein. But now, if you look carefully, it's wrapping back over itself. So that's that third. That's that three degree you get. That's the and third. The Latin. I can say first, second, third, fourth. But this is Latin, so the Latin word for third is tertiary. Tertiary. Okay. Wait. I just said that. Okay. I thought I could check my fault. And somewhere in here, there's a place which has a shape that exactly matches what it is that's going to be put in there. And that's why if that were maltase, then sucrose sugar would not fit that shape. And that couldn't break down sucrose. But maltase sugar, maltose sugar fits that shape perfectly if that's maltose. And that's, the, and, the, and that's a three-dimensional look there. But you got this way, that way, and the other way. So there's your three dimensions. Now the next one you see is going to blow your mind. This is quaternary. Quaternary. And this is not one, this is not one chain. It's several chains. Look back. That's just one chain, right? You see just one there? This is one earthworm. This sucker has like three earthworms. A four earthworms. Or two earthworms. It could be one tertiary, or two tertiary, three tertiary, or even four. All in connection. Now, now these, these are designed to function. And this is the most complex of all the shapes. And when you see it, you're going to, you'll be able to see that there are four of these making up what you're about to see. Okay? Now, here's this shape. And I will you try to draw it. There's two blue ones. And there's two yellow ones. So there's four. There's actually four of those. Four tertiaries. There's four tertiaries making that quaternary. It could be three. Quaternary just means the fourth level. It doesn't mean four. Oh, okay. it's just four. It means fourth level. Happens to be four this time. It could be three. But it's composed of not one but several of the tertiaries. That's how hemoglobin is put together right there. And hemoglobin, as you know, carries oxygen. All 
All right. So that's your, and when I say peptides, that's what you call the single little protein thing. Right here is one peptide. There happened before. I wish they had made four colors, but they did. They made two colors and two colors, and it looks like a great big old blue worm. But actually, it's two blue worms. I see the two animals, but the blue one's the same one. That's your highest level, and it hadn't got before him. It could be less than four, but if you're only one, then you're right back there. I mean, um, where I go to? That's just one. That'd be four. There's all four at one time. Getting simple, a little more complex, a little more complex, and then the most complex. And the one on the top on my side would be the primary. And then the one over yonder, the little, the little quartz screw, would be secondary. And the one on my side on the bottom would be tertiary. And that great big old mess on the far side would be quartz mess. Can you go back one? Yeah. Please. Aggregation means a collection. This is an aggregation right here. The collection. Okay. All right. Pictures do a lot more than words. I mean, you can't say that in words like you show the picture though. I mean, you probably know by now. Proteins can change their shape. That's why they're so cool. If you if if you when you cook your meat and the meat gets tender, all you've done is change the shape of the protein. And I just pull that roast back with your hands. Until you change the shape, they cling to each other. And there's also, I'm <clears throat> sure it says pH down there toward the third line up. Anyone know what pH really stands for, the two letters, P and H? You know what they really mean, the words? It means percentage of hydrogen. When you first begin looking at acids, we realize that acids are full of hydrogens. And the more you have, the more the acid you are. So we, we use pH to show that. And then we learn later on that, oh man, the opposite is true for the bases. The more OHs you have, the more base. So we don't have a pOH. We only have pH. But we realize that H is only half of the water molecule. OH is the other half. Water has one H and one OH. It's an acid and base. If I take that water though and I put a lot of H's in a compound, then the more H's I add to the compound, the more acid it becomes. Or if I take that water and put OH's in the compound, the more OH's, the more OH's I add, the more basic it becomes. Like NaOH is in a lot of soaps and detergents. That is sodium hydroxide. It's a good thing to get the water. And then the acids that you might find in your car, that's H2SO4. There's your H. H is always plus. OH always negative. So when you, when you say it, if I say NaOH, that's your negative member. That's a base. CaOH, calcium hydroxide, hydroxide. OH is called hydroxide. And in water, you could call water hydrogen hydroxide. It's H and OH. But we say H and We just count the H and guess. But in real life, water actually is an H molecule hooked to an OH group. There's an H, and there's an H. So we just say H2. And you think the two H's are hooked together? They're not. One H is by itself, and the other H is an OH group. So water really is H and OH. So you could say hydrogen hydroxide. But we say water. And then if you have, if you if you put something in that solution and all the H's move into it, then that becomes an acid. If I put another thing in the solution and all the OH's go to it, then that becomes the base. And the more acid, the more H's you have, the stronger your acid you become. And the more OH's you have, the stronger base. So lye carry you good. You can't drink lye, that'll eat your throat up. Lye is a strong base. Well you can't. 
Have you ever thrown up and had that burning sensation in your throat? That's the hydrochloric acid getting you that you made yourself. In your stomach, you have a coating that it doesn't burn you. It's not your stomach. So when you throw up, the burning sensation you have is actually the acid from your stomach tearing up your esophagus. The folks who have bulimia and they throw up on purpose, they have, they have throat problems because the acid eats them alive. And your, your stomach is made for the acid. Stomach is made for it. It's got the mucus, it's got the grease. Acid can't do the, get to the grease for your stomach. But the esophagus ain't got that protection. So a lot of folks don't like throwing up because it hurts. Hurts. The first time your your child told you better be there because that'll scare a child to death. Think about how violent that is. You you happen sometimes you something bad and you want to throw up. <laughs> the first time a child throws up, he just doesn't know what happened. You need to be there. And I've got my mom had a wet rag and hold my head with the wet rag and she was stroking my back and I'd be able to come out. Take too much M and M's or something, you know. And you got me. But she was always there. Now Daddy didn't do that. Dad was cleaning the bed set when I threw up in the bed. Mama's the one that had the commode with me. And, but the, when, I always made a cool rag. It felt so good, the cool rag. And the, when my two sons had an accident, usually I was the one who cleaned the mess up while the wife was inside the bathroom with them, comforting them, let them know you ain't dying, just think you are. And sometimes you have to dry heat where you want to throw up and nothing coming. Alright. But anyway, oh, like I said, temperature, if, if you boil or freeze or whatever you do, whenever you take and you heat an enzyme like a protein, you change its shape. And then it can't unlock. It. And then it no longer fits the sucrose. Your, your spit makes an enzyme called amylase. And amylase attacks a carbohydrate we call amylose. That's bread starch. That's bread starch. It only works though at pH of seven. When it when you swallow and it gets to your stomach, the pH down there destroys the amylase and you know you can't break down any more of the bread. You never get through breaking down French fries. You swallow it too soon. It'll start to get soft in your mouth and then you swallow it. Well in the stomach, that amylase, which works at pH of seven, now it's pH two. pH destroys amylase. The stomach's pH is on to break down proteins, not fats, not starches, not nucleic acid. Now, when the food leaves your stomach, the intestines pH is back at seven again. Because the pancreas pours out sodium hydroxide, and that kills the acid from your stomach. Well, the pancreas, you know, this is why amylase, the pancreas make more amylase to finish what your mouth started. So in your intestines, the pancreas pours out a second shot of amylase, which works at pH 7, which is what your intestines are. So you get to finish digesting what you started in the mouth, which is what you said. And all your, all your digestion ends, it finishes in the intestine. It starts different places, but it finishes in the intestine. A breakdown of carbohydrates start in the mouth. Nothing happens in the esophagus. Never does. Nothing happens in the stomach. And then the large the small intestine finishes because they receive enzymes from pancreas. Stomach, um, the proteins that meet you eat, the, the French, uh, the, the, the steak, the egg, the lobster, whatever it was, that digestion starts in the stomach. And it's finished also by the, by the small intestine. And the fats you eat, they go right through the stomach and they start digestion and finish digestion in your small intestine. The small intestine is where everything actually comes to a close. Now that's where the villi stick out and the blood vessels and all the food you digested go in the blood and get carried to your liver. And your liver takes it and processes it and then sends it out to your cells and you grow. It goes to your liver first though. A lot of poisons you take, if you took a poison, because it goes liver first, it destroys the liver. And that destroys you. The alcohol is one of the biggest things you have. Alcohol can be absorbed right out of the stomach. It don't need the intestine. But it goes to your liver, and that's where the liver, because it's doing its job, is attacked by the alcohol. And alcohol, as you know, kills cells. You take a scalpel, put an alcohol, and kill the germs on the scalpel. 
Do the same thing to your own liver cells, and that's when you got cirrhosis coming in and all kinds of problems that people have later on in life. Um, I don't drink. I never drank a whole lot. I drank like you know my friends, you know. I just flat don't like drinking. I mean, I don't like I don't like the way it tastes. I don't have a problem with my brother drinking. I don't want to hurt anybody. But I ain't gonna say you shouldn't drink. My mama would though. She beats that Christian drunk. And my thought is, don't hurt anybody. Drink all you want to. But hurt yourself. And I, I realize that. I mean, I don't smoke because I think it hurts me. If I didn't think it hurt, I'd do it. All right. So anyway, the proteins can be changed by a number of things and they are on the board. Uh, I'll mention to you one day that the proteins in your cell membranes that control what goes in, they can close themselves, they can open themselves because they can change their shape based on what needs to be happening. And inside the cell, the conditions tell the protein, we need some more glucose, open up, let glucose flow in. We got enough, close up, keep it out. The trees out here, on the bottom of them, they have little holes that are called stomata. And these stomata, he has no lungs, he doesn't really breathe like you breathe. But the stomata open, and what comes out of that leaf is oxygen, thank God for that. And what goes in those holes is carbon dioxide that he uses to make his food. I don't eat pine noodles, but I do eat lettuce. So I, by doing that, I'm eating, I'm getting food to plant A. It all boils down to plant life. You know that, right? It's all, it's all plants. Why well, eat cows? But guess what they eat? So if you, if, you, if you destroy plant life, it's going to affect me one way or another, whether I'm a or not. It all goes down to the sun and the, and the producers, which are the plants. All right? I hear some functions performed by proteins. And because they have a, a particular shape, <coughs> They can hold things together. <coughs> if you ever see a picture of a nerve cell, and you see a picture then of an epithelial cell, they look nothing alike. They're totally different. And the shape is maintained by the proteins in that cell. That's why you don't find a nerve cell looking like anything but a nerve cell. Cardiac muscle tissue looks only like cardiac muscle tissue because there's proteins in it. Those stripes you see on the, on the muscle here, that's proteins doing that. So, cells are based on their protein structures and the shape of them. Another one you have, um, Fungi, which are your mushrooms and, and your mold and things like that, they don't have bones inside them. You have exoskeletons. Insects especially have exoskeletons. When you step on a roach, you crunch it because you crack the, the shell. But we have bones. That we, we must have ligaments holding the bones together. We have muscles that attach to. I mean, we have tendons that attach the muscles to the bones. All those structures are made of protein. All the attaching structures are made of protein. There's a fiber called collagen. And just like a clothes hanger, you can bend it, but you can't stretch it. That's just right for a ligament. I want to bend my fingers, but I don't be able to stretch it. And they don't. Um, cartilage. Also, on both sides of your sternum is cartilage. And when you take a deep breath, it bends and, you, and your chest rises and falls. Without cartilage, you'd be like a tin can. You couldn't breathe because it wouldn't go up. So you need cartilage on the rib cage to let the ribs move. You don't feel them move when you take a deep breath. They all rise up. You don't feel anything inside. It's just, it's just a natural phenomenon. I tell you what, if you have good health, then you catch your blessing. There's so many things go wrong with you. The fact that you feel good, you better count your blessings. A lot too many folks are they 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 stress out before things that they can't change anyway. Things you can't change, but don't worry about it. My leg, I don't worry about my leg. So I ain't got a leg. I don't lose sleep over it. I just keep on functioning. Now there are folks worse off than me, I know. 
who have no legs and broken back too. Mm -hmm. So I have, I'm blessed whether you think so or not. I think I am. My philosophy is my cup is half full. What's the other way you look at it? I have that. Oh, What's that? Pessimism? Mm -hmm. Versus what? Optimism. I want to be optimistic. Can you make a day up and you always think about, oh, what was me? A lot of folks don't want to get up. Every day. They want to sleep at 12. I get up. I get going. I got things to do today. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I run down. Like, I work on my PowerPoint. I worked last night at 3 o'clock. Yeah. And I got up at 7 and kept going. Because I was having fun. The problem is, I have fun doing what I do. And when you're having fun, I stay up all the time. And my wife's going, not the bed. I'm going, I'm on a roll. Because you I am. I mean, I, I'm learning stuff, teaching this class, that I remember being told in college, well, I said what you did, and I'm going, why didn't they explain it like this? And I went, maybe you didn't know it. So I want to explain it to you like I thought that you should be explaining to me. I always practice the golden rule. And what's that golden rule say? Mm -hmm. Do what the orders as you like to I heard one. He who has the gold rule. Those who have the gold makes the rule. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like your family. He who has the gold makes the rule. Wow. Okay. I don't think I had a dollar. Movement. All right, movement. Proteins make the, make the flagella. The cilia made of proteins. And those things easily. They can move the cell or they can move something by the cell. And even your arm is moving like this. It's because actin and myosin, they're, both, they're proteins. You're writing right now. You're moving that pencil. That's called the proteins. You're looking up, looking down. Proteins make them muscles work. You can't get away. You're protein. You are protein. Well, you said basically protein is in everything. Huh? Basically, you said protein is in everything. Yeah. You can't get away from it. We should spend more time discussing ribosomes than we do. The ribosomes make proteins, right? And proteins make your hair, your eye color, your skin, your muscles. You protein, they all there's to it. And when you trim, you're really protein. Someone like me, though, I've got some fat on it. So my protein will hit it. And we mentioned the, the protein channels in the they open and close to let things in and out. So these proteins, they, they are able, there's nothing like this that can change its shape. Carbs can't do it, lipids can't change, the acids can't change. Only proteins have the ability, because of their tertiary nature and that third nature, they can change their shape, but you can, Sometimes you do something and the protein changes, you don't want it to. Fever, high fever destroys enzymes in your brain. That's why you die. And if you survive a high fever, you might be what? A vegetable. vegetable. So we don't want to stop the fever, but you don't want things to run ragged either, do you? You run wild. Because the fever does help you to some degree. Because the fever kills the things that invade your body. They're like 98.6. They like that temperature. That's why they got in you in the first place. And they start making their little babies. And you start feeling sick. So the body says, I want to raise my temperature. I want to make it bad for him to live. You want, want to move away. And that's called a fever. So as you elevate your fever 100 degrees, you feel bad. The bacteria feels worse though. Because you're going to have the white blood that kill them. But, if, but that's a positive feedback. If you start going faster and higher, and you get hotter and hotter and hotter, the very heat of your fever can destroy the enzymes that make your nerves work. So when you do recover, the enzymes have been irreversibly changed and you've lost your intelligence. You can't get up, you can't walk, and you're a vegetable. Some folks, I'd rather die. I think I would too. So I have, even here, I had a, I had a no risk take, no, don't worry, don't worry, that take me. My brain is all I have, but think about it. It's don't it. brain this cells regenerate me. though? Huh? Brain cells regenerate. Oh, no. 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 Not that's, that's that thing. They don't. The brain tissue does. If the tissue around them, not the neurons. The, the supporting cells, all they do is support. I want the ones that carry the impulses that make me smart, 
They remember my phone number. Make me feel things. Make me talk. All the supporting cells, they're not doing the job that my neurons are doing. So I, I guess I don't care about them. But I care more about the neurons, keeping those suckers healthy. And the Alzheimer's is when the, the sheep start breaking down and the cells start. I know no one ever came back to Alzheimer's. Got it, got better. So it's progressively worse. I know no one who had it and now they got all the brain back. Do you? Yeah. And when you, whenever you start saying it, you go, oh, well, we're going to get an Alzheimer's disease. And it's time to, for a long he's in a home somewhere. He can't take care of his cell. I mean, he might go use the bathroom and tie a shoe. But when he leaves his house, go somewhere, he forgets where he lives. Can't even walk back to his house, cop finds him. If he ain't got a wallet, guy don't know who he is. Don't know, and that's a problem in police have. They find old folks. Like in the mall, no. No. Guy, he got there somehow, and now he forgot how, where he lives. And, kind of like a child. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, the, our, our natural process is from child to the back to child like thing. Mm -hmm. Doctor both sides. Mm -hmm. Think about it, I me. Mean, a lot of folks say, oh, I want to die as an adult. No, I don't. I want to be a, I want to be a child again. Mm -hmm. I want to see my grandkids. But I want to recognize them. I don't want my son to walk him in. I know who he is. Yeah. And I've heard, and I'm glad I'm in this profession I'm in, because the more you use your mind, like I do, the less chance you have of getting Alzheimer's. Use and it when you stop it. thinking, and you stop exercising that brain, well, you're in line for it. The you know, neuron, that, the neuron, you it you lose it you lose it. They, they pass away pretty fast. Well, so I retired. I'm working more now. I did for it. When I taught high school, I don't work as hard in high school. But now I retired. Every day's not Saturday. Every day's Monday. My God, I, I should never retire. <laughs> but I got to admit, though, I'm not making. Well, I ain't making more from retirement plus my disability and like that. But teaching in college is more rewarding than high school. I don't want to be there. What, what pays more, really teaching college or teaching high school? Huh? What What did you say pays more? High school teaching high school pays. Yeah. Oh, really? I got thirty five bucks an hour in high school. Mm -hmm. So and they're paying you to good. put up with high school students. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah, I got it. But so I was fortunate in that in my profession, I got to teach the advanced students. I didn't have your criminals and your hoodlums. I had the ones going to become doctors, going to become lawyers. So all my time of teaching, I didn't have the war stories that my colleagues had. I like going to school because I don't have a bunch of folks there who are smart, who wanted to be there, not the ones who didn't like school, didn't like teachers, didn't want to be there. So I didn't have that. So I, so I got to admit, I saw, I was, I looked through the road class class a long time teaching. I never saw the headaches that a lot of folks saw. And I'm glad for that because I still like what I did. Communication, another function that proteins perform. Sales need to talk to each other. Like a man, woman in marriage. Many divorces have caused no communication. You don't talk to me anymore. Me and your wife talk too much sometimes. Well, we can drive, we can drive to Florida, me and her together, and not say nothing. We're happy to be together. Thank you. We have learned you don't have, you've seen folks you're with and you got to make conversation. They can't shut up. That's and, and when they stop, they're thinking, what can I say next? And you're going, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but I have yeah, a good, so she's, she's, she's a good friend sense. of mine, but she's the kind of person that she can't stand silence. And I don't like silence. <laughs> she's always asking me some stupid question. Not my wife. <laughs> All right. Hormones are the agents that, in my mind, send a telegram to, to somebody. Those are telegrams that the cells send to each other. Hormones. And they're proteins. Hormones are proteins. Um, the pheromones are what um, insects send out. And we've used that to help conquer some insects. We can draw, like the southern pine beetle, to a box of poison. So we have put in that box the female pheromone for the sweetheart. And when he gets there because he's stupid, yeah. mm -hmm. the poison kills him. Poor 
the, the, uh, the alarm emotions. How do you think you get stung by a swarm of killer bees when one finds you? The rest come. You know why? You kill that sucker out when they're alarm. And they all will come. The best thing to do is just don't try to kill them. But those, th these are, I don't know if, I know, I've heard dogs sometimes can tell you're afraid of them. They can sense fear. Well, right afraid of me. And dogs, that, and then ones that sense fear, they want to nip at your heels and run you up the wall. <laughs> the dogs that know you ain't afraid of them, they'll pretend they're body. But my wife's scared of dogs. She loves me scared of dogs, and dog bit her when she was a child. And I, when I bought my beagles, and they were itty bitty puppies, big eared puppies, and she lost her fear of beagles. And even when they grew up, she loved them. But any other dog, she was ready to get back in that car and go home. And my, my, my Tim has a pot belly pig. She don't care about that either. Big old belly on him. Her walks around running every time. Run, run, run. And wait, 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 she, won't, she won't bite you, but she won't come to you. Here, pig. You don't have to. Kind of like a cat. I don't, I, I don't like cats because they don't come when I call them. I don't mind petting a cat, but they, they ain't happy to see me. Maybe you, need a trick. you walk in, a dog, he's hopping all around, you know, licking all over you. Okay, makes you feel good. <laughs> I like kittens, though. Mm -hmm. And when they grow up, you can have them. <laughs> Give me another kitten. I'll grow a kitten up and you have them. Okay? Watch out, um, The signal molecules we talked about, they attach to protein. You got proteins attaching to proteins. And then when they attach, the cell does something. Because they got the word, so to speak. It's all part of communication. So inside our bodies are sending out signals and all that kind of stuff. Yes. All the time. <laughs> all your cells are talking and you don't hear a thing this thing. But when the talk is interrupted, you start feeling sick. I mean, how do you describe nausea? Now, how do you actually describe it physically? Well, you all know what it feels like to be on the verge of puking, and there's something, there's something wrong inside, but you can't pop your finger on it. But that's what we're talking about. Everybody here knows what it means to be nauseated, but if it, put it in words to explain to it, it's hard to do that. A lot of teachers, they know what the process is, but they can't tell you how it works. And I'm trying to be the other way. I want to do both of them, see how it works also. So all these processes I've discovered that when you stop and slow down and consider them, you can figure it out. If you slow down and take the time. I never before looked at glycolysis before I had to teach it. I always heard this thing called glycolysis. And I'll go, oh, mm -hmm. I'm hear that. And now I know it, you know what's nothing to do it. Because I got into it. And now it's just not quite simple. I discovered that biology. I mean, a lot of folks say, you're a biology maker? Yeah, you got to be crazy. I said, no, I love biology. Well, if I hear you're a math maker, I thought you got to be crazy. <laughs> Everyone has their likes, right? Mm -hmm. And my niche is biology. And we're all biologists. How, how good would that be? Mm -hmm. well, you all got your favorite thing, right? Everyone has a niche. And say, look, I found that on time. Some folks still look at it. Some try to find second careers. You're still looking. I'm lucky, I found that. I had a good paying job. I did what I like to do. What's wrong with that? Some folks have good paying jobs they hate. But they got a house to pay for, they can't get out of a job. We're gonna take another job, but don't pay as much, so you're stuck in this rat race. Health goes downhill, blood pressure goes high. You're locked in. I was very lucky in that I found what I like to do. I didn't make millions, but I made a good living. I tell you what, the more degrees I had, the more I made. I don't see how a teacher gets about one degree, though. Because they pay you extra money. And I had three degrees. And that's how I got my paycheck. I had a bachelor's degree, master's, and specialist. And specialist was on the same line doctor was. So I wasn't specialized. I didn't want to be a PhD. So I went to special. I had to write a paper like a PhD does. It just, you know, it's just not as prestigious, but I'm not Dr. Tap, I'm just Mr. Tap. 
but there are folks in my classes who are on their PhD programs. But I wanted to, I wanted to specialize. I want I want to be a jack of all. I want to be a, a master of one trick. So I specialize. And that's the end degree. Um, there are some reactions that would never happen in you that were not for the catalyst making it go. And these catalysts are called enzymes. You wouldn't break that meat down what for the enzyme making it happen. You wouldn't break down sugar. It wasn't an enzyme. I mean, it takes it takes too long for it to happen by itself. So the enzyme it happens in a few hours, and so you eat the food for breakfast, and then by noon you're using it because of your enzymes, which are proteins, which are proteins, and they activate, they speed, they, they make the reaction go faster, so you can get it done in a reasonable time, so you have time to live on. If you ain't dinner and took a year to digest it, you'd be dead. You could live a year. You had to be a doctor. And it's time to do that. Okay? But anything that speeds the reaction is called a catalyst. When you have two guys on a verge of fight and a third guy going, hit him, hit him, there's a catalyst. He's going to egg it on, right? If he wasn't there, they might walk away. And the catalyst. Now, the guy who's egging them on, does he get in the fight? No. No. Catalysts don't get the reaction. When that thing's over, the catalyst is still sitting there. And when the fight's over and the guy's a drug off the principal office, the catalyst going. Mm -hmm. he's, usually, he's usually a catalyst. You can have more than one catalyst, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, one per reaction you need to have. One per reaction. Now, a, the ATP synthesis I told you about a minute ago, that's a catalyst. That enzyme's a catalyst, and that was a catalyst. The ending ACE is, is a new kid. We haven't always used that ending, but we're getting better with it. So if the substrate is sucrose, then we name the enzyme sucrase. We take the first half of the word and add ACE to it. So the enzyme that synthesizes ATP is called ATP stem base. Now, there are enzymes like the one called trypsin. He's grandfathered in. We knew him before the ACE had started. We don't call it trypsinase, it's called so trypsin. And we have one though called peptidase, which happens before trypsin. Peptidase and nucleon block, so we got to name him the ACE ending. But, um, you know, amylase, you say, what's, what's amy? Amy is a starch. And up here, you start breaking down starches, and french fries starch, red starch. But like I said, you swallow it before you finish it, and then the stomach stops it because of high pH. And when the stomach stuff leaves the intestine, well, that amylase is still, still destroyed. New amylase comes in from the pancreas and finishes what you started. The body has it covered. That's the most amazing thing. The more I learn, the more I'm amazed at how the body functions. It is so cool. But um, the substrate would be the sucrose. And the enzyme that breaks it down would be the sucrase. We just say uh, maltose is broken down by maltase. Galactose is broken down by galactase. So we use the ending a whole lot, but there's sometimes you get you get enzyme and they don't have the ACE like like trypsin. And that you can know was, was actually named he was he was known for the convention came out. So we didn't change the name. I wish they would. But they're not talking to me about So it. that's trypsin is named after somebody? No, I don't know what they're named after. I have no clue um, what it's named after. I've never even considered that. But I know one thing, when you write it, it's a small t. And I suspect it's not named after it. It's probably a Latin version. When you, yeah, write, like, probably, gold, yeah. when you write gold, you have that's big G. That's a guy's <laughs> name. <laughs> but because when you write trypsin, it's small t. I suspect it's a Latin word. It means something. It probably means something that makes sense too. If I knew the Latin, most of these names are what you seem to like, like erythrocytes. A site means cell. Erythros means red. red. It means red cell. We we say red blood cell, 
But erythrocyte actually means red cells. Red cells. Leucose means white. White. So a leucocyte is, in Latin, white, white cells. cells. It worked there, there. So if you knew some Latin, taking medical terminology, it'd be much easier on Because these words come, and Greek also, and Greek, and German. German also produces some of the words that we are not familiar with. Um, there is, you do make peroxide and you've got to get rid of it or it will kill you. But you've got an enzyme for that. It is called peroxidase. And when peroxidase functions, peroxide is a waste product of metabolism. It's one that will kill you though. You don't get rid of it. But thank God you got peroxidase and gets rid of it. Turns into water. And I mentioned also, what's the word cleave mean? It cleaves. Break down. What's the meat cleaver do? Chops up meat. Yeah, break down. Cleave means separate. Mm. So sucrose is changed into the two monomers, glucose and fructose, by the enzyme we call sucrase. The naming works pretty well. All right? Sometimes they're named for their function and not for what they work on. They're things called polymerases. And a polymerase polymerizes. If, if you're going to string together pearls to make a necklace, you are a polymer. When you hook them together, you're a poly, you're polymerizing them. When you take like 20 pearls and you put them on strings and you make yourself a necklace, as you do that, that's called polymerization. And you are the polymerase. When you make new DNA because your cells are going to grow and I need more DNA, polymerase is what makes a copy by bringing together new sets of acids to make a brand new DNA for the new cell. So polymerase is named for what it does. It's not called, it's not, it's not called DNA age, it's called polymerase. And all it's doing is making DNA. Even if you have DNA polymerase, you have RNA polymerase. One makes one and one makes the other one. You don't have polymerase. I need to know what I'm polymerizing. So when you're talking about making new DNA for a new cell, that would be DNA polymerase. When you think about making RNA to go outside the cell and direct some activity, you'd be using RNA polymerase. You're still making. So the polymerase, would that be anabolic or catabolic? Well, it's, 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 it's anabolic, it's building up. You build it. That's the building. That's a bill. So that would be anabolic. When you hear it, when you see anabolic steroids, that ain't no fancy word. It means they build muscle. That doesn't mean they build. Can some steroids break down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you take those to get bigger muscles? No. I want the anabolic. I want antibiotics to build. Now, nucleic acids are the fourth or kind of organic nutrient that we deal with. And you know them basically as RNA and DNA. And the R stands for ribose. Actually, when I was where you were, we had three words for it. We called it ribose, nucleic acid. <coughs> And they combine the two first two words to make it ribonucleic. R still stands for the kind of sugar, ribose. And DNA, when I where you were, we call that three words. It was called deoxyribose, nucleic acid. But now they combine the first two words and just call it deoxyribose, nucleic. And the acid still stays by itself.
And those are polymers because they're hooked together, nucleotides hooked together to make them. They're ha they have bases. They have five kinds of bases. And whether you have RNA or DNA based on which ones you have. The DNA is like a corkscrew. It's a double line though. And they're not they're not wrapping it, they wrap as a pair. It's another strange thing to see. It's not like taking two threads and doing the right. They actually they're wrapped together. And back in the 50s, we discovered the nature of DNA. I mentioned y'all Robin Franklin, I did, did, did her bad. But she was the one whose picture was the one that started the whole ball rolling. And she got no credit for it. But she died though before they get a prize out, so that kind of solved that problem. She had to be alive to get the prize. The three guys who got the prize though, would have gotten it had they not seen her photograph without her knowledge or her permission to use it. Her boss, Marge Wilkins, got her photograph and showed it to those two guys watching the crib. They then went one step further and showed the DNA structure. They won the money. They won the prize. Watson wrote a book. You ever read that book? Boy, he got ego you won't believe. He did not like Rosalind Franklin, the lady who wrote the book. Because when he, their first, their first while he put it together, she laughed at him. That's stupid. And she was right. Because, see, in DNA, the bases are inside. You know it, right? His model and outside. Because in real DNA, the bases hook to each other. You know it, right? The first model that, that Watson put together, he had the bases sticking outside. And, and uh, Rosalind says, that can't be right. Made him mad. No one talked to him like that. And she's a woman? In her, in her book, boy, she... In his book, he talked bad about her. I think one time she always punched him out. I, mean, I can't can the buttons. She probably would whip his butt too if he had a chance. But at, at the last thing he said, though, he came back in his book and he said, I got to apologize to one person. <coughs> one person in his book, and he mentioned Barbara Franklin. I did not realize that when she went to college, they had a room for ladies, a room for men, couldn't mix. So she couldn't share ideas with anybody. No one on her level talked to her. She couldn't, she couldn't have tea with the guys and discuss these structures. She was shunned. Yet she succeeded. And only recently do people like me tell you all the story. A lot of folks don't still don't mention Rosalind Franklin. They're still show this. And I'm not. I'm going to give credit for credit to you. And that lady, she was done dirty. But she didn't say anything about it. She could have spoke up. Other people have spoke up for her, and I'm one of them. But this, that, that's, that's a, if you want to read a good biography, read about Rosalind Franklin. That lady was real, real smart. But she didn't win the prize because she died at, I think, what, 32? She died from um, ovarian cancer. <coughs> she was taking pictures in x rays, and the picture she took gave her the cancer. Her actual, actual work. Came back and made her sick. She died from it. But then, you know, you know, uh, Marie Curie, mm -hmm. the famous, right she died off right because right of what she was doing. They also killed her daughter and her husband too. Uh, her husband, yeah. The radiation that she was looking at discovered many things, but never knew that that thing is killing me. And by the time she realized it, it's too late. Um. DNA is nothing more information. It's just how, what color your eyes got to be, the texture of your hair, curly, not curly, uh, the, the freckles. It's just information. But the info is on what we call genes. Your genes make you, you know that. But genes are made of proteins. You still can't get away from proteins. And DNA has the code 
for the kind of protein that they'll need to make their life. <coughs> it all boils down to still. You still can't get rid of them. protein is that, that is probably the organic molecule of life, protein. Hey, that work. Even your genes are made of protein. I don't even know if does. Without DNA, you wouldn't know what kind to make. So you need DNA to determine what kind you're making. But you're making protein every second of the, of the day. All right? And all the, all the DNA does is know what order to put the acids in. If I give you five letters, I said, make me worse as you can. Could you do that? I'm not going to do it for fun. Well, in this case, DNA does that, but he knows the sequence. I mean, the letters S A W saw backwards is another word that's what DNA job makes sure it doesn't get done backwards. It doesn't get done backwards. It doesn't get done that bad. Alright. Um here's the problem though. You know DNA is busy making proteins. But not all of it does. Some of the DNA is doing nothing. It's just sitting there doing nothing. When I was in school, I, I, was, I thought they taught me that the whole DNA molecule is busy making protein. And now we know it's not. They're just pieces of it. And the pieces are your genes. So your DNA is not gene, 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 gene. It's gene, gene, nothing, 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 gene, gene, nothing, gene, gene, nothing, 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 gene. And the nothings are called, they're actually called junk DNA. That's not my word. They're called junk DNA. It has no function. No function whatsoever. We, I think that the, the premise is that those, I mean, Monkeys have long tails, right? Look at them with the head. And they think that on a monkey, the junk DNA is still working to make the long tail. But on us, it's not working to make no tail. You follow me? So the, some of these junk proteins, are, some folks who think by evolution try to tie it into it while we have no tail. But does it really have tail? No. Chips. no? Chips don't have tails. It's just, just like us. But a monkey had to tell that could actually grab things like my fingers can. That'd be cool. I wouldn't mind having feet that could grab like a monkey had. You could, you could drive your car and read your book and, and tell the picture you know. Uh, the non coding DNA basically is bond, it the holds the chromosomes together. It's possible that there's a section of DNA that went bad and it got isolated so it can't be used again. It's still there, it just can't be used again. That's what the, um, the bee myth about dangerous mutated sequences. Then they get mutated, the body says, we're going to just, we're going to just, just lock you away. You're going to be in isolation. We can take um, we can take bacteria and insert a gene, a, a gene sequence, and then they make insulin for us. The bacteria can be slaved by just doing a, a gene a gene splice. Can we do it all the time. A lot of folks say we should be doing that kind of stuff. That's like playing God. But I figured if God gave me the ability to do it, He must mean me to do it. If you didn't open the door, then I can't walk through it, could I? So my, my flock always been that, you know, just cause if there's some religions that won't see doctors, right? Mm -hmm. And they, they do prayer. Well, my thought is that, you know, prayer, I know prayer works. But if the doctor has the ability, then I'm going to use them to figure God's will. That's my thought. I could be wrong. There's just one kind of DNA. There's three kinds of RNA. And the first kind is my last word. It's called messenger RNA. That's the 
one that leaves the nucleus carries a message. It got it from the DNA. The DNA is the boss. But he can't leave the nucleus and go and tell the robber someone what to do. So the boss tells the messenger what to do, and then he leaves the nucleus and goes to the robber. And that's why I mentioned to, to these two ladies here, if I told Haley black, she would say white, and then this this lady here would print black, which one I wanted. They work on opposites. If I say up, she'd say down, and she'd do up, which one I wanted. I can't talk to her. I can talk to her though. It'd be nice if I could talk right to her, I think, but that's not how it works. If I could talk right to, 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 to Ms. Puffing, it, it would be fine, but it's not. So I got to do it, well, I got to take it to Haley. Haley talks to Julie. That's how it works in real life. The DNA talks to the messenger. The messenger goes out and talks to the ribosome, and the ribosome puts together a one by working opposites. Photography does that. The, the, the next kind of the next kind of RNA is called transfer. Now the messenger, he can't go and get the amino acids. He can just tell what kind. Transfer goes and finds the acids and brings them back to the ribosome. He transfers the acids based on what. The messenger said. So my example, Jimmy would be the transfer actor. Haley would be the messenger. I'm the DNA. So if I said black, Haley said white. And she said white, and Jillian says, that's the one I wanted. So the messenger is always be opposite what I said. And the transfer flips it back to what I said. Pretty cool, how it does it. So, so far you've seen two kind of RNA. The one that leaves the nucleus carrying a message from me. And the one that reads her and goes get the, the, the acid she wants. Okay? So if I said white, white, black, you're going to say what? You're going to say what? Black, black, white. And then you're going to say, which is what I want. That one comes in three. The code comes in three. It's never just one letter. And, and <coughs> like an alphabet, a letter, three codes make it. Like CCG might make the protein, the enzyme called glycine. And glycine is part of a bigger thing called a protein. If I, if I want GGC, GGC, you're going to say CCG. She's going to fit back to what I wanted in the first place. Pretty cool that works. And then she takes that to the ribosome, he hooks them together. And what comes out of it is a protein based on what I said to her and what she read from the messenger. And the protein being manufactured is what I call for. In a funny way, it works perfectly. So you're the DNA. She's I'm the RNA. DNA. She's, she's a messenger RNA. Uh -huh. and that's and she's transfer. And then she transfer go against the acids. Because see, I want I want I want a protein made like a five acid, right? Let's say the five, in my mind, let's say white, 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 black, black, okay? She will say black, 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 white, white. And she will come back and read it white, 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 which is what I said. And then, then the next acid might be, you know, up, up, down, down, up. So you go down, down, what did I say? Down, down, up. <laughs> But you reverse it back. So when you get done, in a, in a weird way, by doing opposite, she has manufactured what I wanted. But I can't talk. I can't tell her right on. So I, I lie to her. No, and she'll lie to her. Thank you, boy. What if there's four people? There ain't four people. There's never four people. Mm -hmm. There's always just the DNA, the messenger, and the transfer. There's a third RNA, right? You went, where's that sucker at? I'm about to get there, too. But there's a third RNA, but the two that do the, the two that really do the message carrying, and I can't leave the nucleus, I can't talk to Julian. I, I, I can talk to Haley. But I lie to Haley. 
Now, I'm full well, she's going to lie to her. When she does, I get what I want. Can I stay right there? But I got to know what option I got you know, now. What's the option of D? There's no option of D, right? It's got to it's gotta be opposite. I mean, is there an opposite of red? <coughs> Dirt. I don't think there is. <laughs> okay. Yes. What's the opposite? No. No. Up. No. Round. Around. Square. Square. So there's things you can get opposite, but there's some things that make no. There's no nonsense codes that make no difference at all. It just. I mean, when you have some folks put these little. Things in the like the post-its to separate pages of the notebook. Mm -hmm. Some of these codes of me, they're just separated codes. Like I have a code on me for the color of your eyes. It might be a thousand answers at the end. I lie a thousand times to her. She lie a thousand times to her. I'm right back where I was. Remember A always with T, and T always with A. You see it. Those are the opposite. There is no E in this equation. So, but the problem is, I make an R and A, she ain't got to teach her name. What she has? The U. So if I say A, she can't say T. She only have yours still, so you'll say U. And when you say U, she come back and she'll come up with A. That's what I said. The word U. You must have an opposite. That's how they work it. And there's a story how they found that out. And it's pretty unique also, but I don't want to get to it now. Here's your third kind. This one actually is in the ribosome. He's not carrying anything. He is the structure of the ribosome. It's made by the nucleolus, which is a thing in the nucleus. Actually, the ribosome itself is made there. The ribosome is made there because that's where the R RNA is. I want a small R now, then a big R behind it. And the RNA is put together to make the ribosome. So those are the three kinds of RNA. There's the messenger, which leaves me and goes out to the cytoplasm. And the transfer, who is reading her. And now if Jared was the ribosome, he may have done that kind of RNA, which is another time at least it. Actually what's going to happen, I'm going to tell her black. You tell her white. You go find white and you take it him. And I'll tell you up, and you will say, yeah. and you will say, take it him. He was in, hooked those together for me. He puts them together. Y'all just get them from him. One kind of RNA, another kind, another kind. All doing different things. She's carrying a message out to the cytoplasm. She's going to find the, the acids I want based on what she told her. And she'll take it to him and he'll bond them together. Put them together. And that's how it all it works. All right, gotta go. I'm over there. This one is good. I got time. Um, nucleic acids can go in and out of the nucleus. Now, I mean RNA now. Oh, hang on a minute. Two, it says two subunits. You cannot hook together a ribosome is too big to go out of the nuclear pore. So you send out one piece. Another piece, and outside to put together again. That's like when you transport a helicopter a lot of times, you take off the rotors, right? And you send a chopper on one train car and run another train car. And then when you get where you're going, you, you reassemble it, right? Well, in the case here, Jared is made of two subunits. They're both RNA. But if I put them together too soon, you can't get out of the nucleus. So I send out half of Jared, other half of Jared, and out there, he is put back together. Now here's the two. Um, the two subunits, what I just mentioned, they leave a the nucleus through the holes in the nucleus called pores. And they go out there inside of that. And there they're, they're brought together to form 
the thing we call the ribosome. And then the ribosome actually is what? Looking together, the pearls of my pearl necklace. So, long story short, RNA is used by the nucleolus to make the two halves of the ribosome. But it can't put together because they're too big to go out. You send out one half, the other half, and out there they reassemble themselves. And I'll show you a picture of ribosome in a minute. Are you ready? ready? Right. Okay. Um, you need a camera for this too, in a minute, if you have a camera. <coughs> Uh, what did you say A goes with T? Do I, I need to do oh, all Oh, in the coding, I have a little sentence I use. A at T. How do you spell at? A at T. A and T always go together. Or T and A. The other two letters are C and G. C and um, G so go together? C and G. So if I said C, you'll say G. If I said G, you'll say C. If I said A, the partner is always T. Or if I said T, the partner is always A because A at T. And then the A and U for ribosome? Yeah, ribosome, there's no T out there, so it's got to be a U instead. And ribosome is A at U. Because DNA has no U. RNA has no T. But they're twins. They're twins each other. So the U and RNA is just like T and DNA. I ain't know what they do that for. Well, I don't know why they have a fifth one. For I ain't going to deny this thing. I do know there are five of them, and the fifth one in DNA, there's always a T. You don't find any T's in RNA. And the other one, the U, the U still is in RNA and never in DNA. So if I'm making RNA, A goes to the U. If I'm making DNA, A goes to the T. Who wants to make it? Now this is the structure. You see the two pieces of it? There's the top part, and there's the bottom part. There's a large unit and a small unit. And when they're apart, they can go out and move. When they're together, they're too big, they can't get out the door. Like some folks get a piano in their house, they got to take legs off and get it in. So they just little it, and in the house they rhythm. them. And this is what's happening here. Um, this thing right here, is you transfer RNA. Okay? This is your messenger. He's reading it and hooking together. And what's coming out of here is a protein made of amino acids. This tRNA sits right inside that, that ribosome and then can translate and make the kind of protein that you want. Now, he will leave and come back, leave and come back, leave and come back, leave and come back, and go that gets what he wants. He wants he does, he's got to go and get him and bring him back. I got another picture. Yeah, this is not your book, I'm sure. But this that word there, this whole thing drops up. There's there's the messenger being read by the transfer, and this is saying black, he's saying white, and that's the, what does it look like a scorpion tail? That's protein. That's another picture of the two units. It's, a, it's an unusual shape, but there's a large unit on top of the small, and between them is where everything's happening. As a matter of fact, they got to come, they got to separate they let the transfer get in there, then they close again. They got to separate, transfer goes in, and they close. And they get out, they got to separate, and he goes out. She's going to be going back and forth, back and forth to the ribosome. I'll, I'll, the ribosome, Jerry will open and let her leave and go get next to the acid. She'll come back, enter Jerry. He will grab it, hook it on. She'll leave, get up, and come back. She's back and forth, back and forth to Jerry. He must open and close to receive her. And when he closes, he can then build what she brought. He opens and she leaves and goes to another and brings it back. Pretty cool process. But that is the end of the fire. Wait, wait, wait. Can you go back to that? Yeah. I'll go back to the gray one. Let me ask first. <laughs> 
Okay. Oh, we're done. This test happened next time I see you.